It was 26 April of 1986 and a series of tests was about to happen. A series of tests that led to the worst nuclear disaster ever to happen in Europe. Chernobyl. In today's video I'm gonna take you through the images I took during my visit in the exclusion zone several years ago. It was 30 years after the disaster when we arrived and shortly after the security check we got to one of the villages scattered around the zone. As you might expect after the 30 years the houses are pretty much ruined and, well, mostly taken back by the nature. And yet there are still some inhabitants in those villages mostly older people who refused to leave or returned after the disaster. I can recommend you quite a good documentary on this topic called Babushkas of Chernobyl. Then we hit the road again and moved to the town of Chernobyl, which is named the power plant inherited. It's a home to some of the workers in the exclusion zone, as well as to one of the last statues of V.I. Lenin left in Ukraine. By the way, this is a sign which marks so-called hotspots, places where the radiation is much higher than in the surroundings. Shortly after we arrived to Duga, the road to it was said to lead to a children's summer camp, but the woods actually hit a Soviet military base and a massive steel structure of the top secret over the horizon radar, part of the missile defense system. After the disaster, Soviets replaced tons of soil around the radar with sand to keep it working, but the radiation was just too much. The computer systems, which filled the base, just fried. There is even a conspiration theory, quite crazy one actually, which says that the radar had never actually worked and the whole nuclear power plant explosion was staged to cover this. Well, I guess take it or leave it. Speaking of the power plant, it was our next step. The dosimeters, or radiation counters, weren't quite crazy here. You can hear it for yourself. Nonetheless, the catfish in the cooling ponds seemed pretty happy. I was quite desolate to learn that the power plant still produced the electricity in the other blocks until the 2000s. And yeah, here is the block 4 and its old safe confinement. Our last stop was in Pripyat, once a model city of the Soviet Union. A city of future. A city that slept when the block 4 exploded. About 50,000 people lived here. There were schools, hospitals, swimming pools and cinemas. Well, Basically anything you could ask for and everything is just deteriorating now. Buildings are crumbling, boulevards are getting thinner as the vegetation drives. The amusement park was about to open, but when the time did come, there was no one left in the city. We walked in the ruins. And yet, the city has more visitors every year. Some even bring their own props like the gas masks or dolls to set in the abandoned rooms to get a perfect photo from the apocalypse. Interestingly enough, the background radiation levels in Pripyat are not really that high. Well, if you don't count the hotspots and the places like the hospital where are stored the clothes of the firemen who put down the fire on the block 4. We ended up on a rooftop of one of the countless apartment buildings, looking down at the ghost town and the not-so-distant power plant. It was the rooftop where I found out that the secrets of the Soviet Union were blown as soon as you lived in an apartment high enough. You could easily see the giant structure of the Duga radar towering over the trees, and trust me, it definitely did not look like a part of a children's camping site. I shoot the images on a Kodak Tri-X film pushed to ISO 1000 and Pentax Spotmatic 2 camera together with 28 and 55mm lenses. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all the usual stuff and see you next time. Thanks for watching.